Dean. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, that contribution by the member who's just resume, resumed her seat was a good contribution, a thoughtful contribution to what is a, a pretty serious subject, and raised um, raised a, a, a couple of issues which have um, also been discussed quite widely in, in the passage of this bill, and that is um, the uh, impingement on freedom of speech and the approach of this bill perhaps being too heavy-handed. And I would argue that the structure of this bill um, caters for and ameliorates those concerns, and, and perhaps I'll explain a bit later as I go through. I think it's also um, good to recollect that this bill came from a piece of work undertaken by the Law Commission called uh, The News Media Meets New Media uh, Rights, Responsibilities and Regulation in the Digital Age. And so this bill has its foundation in some pretty um, serious work undertaken by the Law Commission and was brought to this House um, and to the attention of the Parliament because of a number of very distressing and serious incidents that have happened, happen now and will continue to happen uh, in cyberspace and it might manifest itself as cyberbullying, it might manifest itself as um, inciting uh, people to commit suicide, it, um, just good old fashioned bullying in the workplace which particularly has been noted a number of times through debate in this bill, particularly uh, to young people who are very vulnerable and very sensitive to people's opinions and suggestions about themselves. We all know and we all agree across this House that it is time um, that this issue is addressed on behalf of young people. So, so the main provisions of this bill are to create uh, a set of 10 communication principles and that will guide the approved agency, which I'll talk a bit more about in a minute, and also the courts, should that become necessary. Um, for example, those principles might be that a communication should not be threatening, should not be intimidating, or should not be menacing. So, uh, as I've mentioned, there will be a new civil enforcement regime created, which will be an approved agency. And that approved agency will receive complaints and where um, appropriate, uh, undertake an investigation into those complaints. Um, the, the agency will have the ability to respond very quickly, and the previous uh, member is quite right in saying that um, uh, the digital to, you know, the, the digital space moves incredibly quickly. There is no news cycle anymore, in effect, uh, just as there is no um, delay in um, uh, digital communications because it is incredibly immediate and the dissemination can be huge. Push a button and, and many, many people are now uh, seeing a message which cannot ever be unsent or undone. So. The, the agency will be able to uh, resolve, hopefully, complaints pretty quickly and directly. With those most serious of those complaints, which are not able to be resolved, to be referred to the district court, which can then, in turn, issue takedown notices and cease and desist notices. So what it does is provides for a, a legislative mechanism for people to um, easily, quickly, efficiently um, provide for the taking down of damaging and harmful content from websites and also clarifies the law regarding website hosts and that is the uh, safe, harbour, safe harbour provision which I'll talk about in a minute. So this bill also makes it an offence to send messages and to uh, make harmful posts online. Um, for example, where it is offensive, obscene, indecent, menacing or knowingly false. And, um, you know, these incidences are all too common, unfortunately. Um, this bill provides for a maximum uh, punishment of up to two years imprisonment. So it's pretty grunty stuff at, at, at the higher end. It will also create a new offence, and that is of incitement to commit suicide even when a person does not attempt to take their own life. And again, it's a pretty grunty measure in this bill, 
And again, that one is punishable, or that offence, new offence, will be uh, punishable for up to three years' imprisonment. This bill also amends the harassment, privacy and the Human Rights Acts to ensure that they are up to date for digital communications. This is such a fast-moving space. Uh, this bill is bringing some other pieces of legislation along with it because, of course, in many cases now, existing pieces of legislation were written before uh, cell phones and the internet were even, imagining, uh, were even imagined. So going back to the civil enforcement regime, so this was one of the key recommendations of the Law Commission and this government agrees that when it comes to digital communication we do need better legal options for addressing complaints and for taking action upon those complaints. And while I agree with the um, member Jacinda Ardern that, that there are existing um, mechanisms, particularly uh, within the school environment um, and also in perhaps the youth court environment, uh, I don't see that those existing measures where they work well cannot be utilised by the civil enforcement regime. In fact, um, I would like to think that as part of the mediation provisions that are enabled by this bill, then those existing mechanisms could be uh, utilised, diversion perhaps, project turnaround, those sort of uh, good community-based options should be part of the suite of remedies available to people. We acknowledge that court cases can take a long time, can be very distressing, can be uh, quite costly on occasion, and the reality is, is that the damage has already been done. And, and the victim, naturally, particularly if it's a young victim, just wants the matter resolved as quickly as possible. And so, um, for those reasons, victims may be very hesitant to lodge a formal complaint to the police. And again, um, it is often the case that younger people don't always enjoy a particularly close and trusting relationship with the police and may be reluctant to come forward. It is well known that uh, victims of bullies often find the hardest thing is to um, reach out for help. Um, and this. I hope with this civil enforcement regime will lower the bar, make it more possible for victims of cyberbullying to reach out. So the uh, approved agency, uh, having received a complaint, can then decide whether there are, are grounds to proceed with an investigation or whether perhaps uh, a complaint might be vexatious. It happens. It may be frivolous. It happens in this environment. Um, uh, it will advise people on steps uh, they can take to resolve a problem. And where it investigates substantial complaints, it will attempt to reach settlements between the complainant and the person responsible. So mediation, and again, therein comes the utilisation, I would have hoped, for existing uh, mechanisms in the resolution of disagreements. Um, where, where, a, where an agreement can't uh, be reached, then of course there is the provisions of the district courts, which I have already mentioned. I just want to finish by talking um, briefly about the safe harbour provision. So a content host could be any, anyone these days, anybody who has a blog, um, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Vodafone. Um, so most of our legislation was written before the internet was a consideration. So it's not always clear about when a content host is liable for the content posted by its users. So we're proposing a safe harbour. So what that means is that a host will not be able to be taken to court for comments put on their website unless they have been notified by the complainant that the co comments are a breach of the law and don't follow the process set out in the bill. Mr Speaker, there have been many thoughtful contributions on this harmful, commu harmful digital communications bill. I do acknowledge that it is a legislative response which um, some view impinges on freedom of speech and perhaps might be too heavy-handed. What I would say is that the protection of particularly our young people, uh, the protection from cyberbullying is so very important that I think this bill is a very good step um, and I commend it to the House.